I do what I do because I've seen God's power transform my own life, and He will do it for you. The key to everything is found in God's Word. I'm Joyce Meyer, and I believe that God can heal you everywhere you hurt. Tonight, I want to talk about trusting God when you don't understand. It's one thing to trust God for something. This room is full of people tonight and lots of people watching by TV that you're trusting God for something. You're asking God to change something in your life, to give you something or to make something go away that's unpleasant. You're trusting God to change somebody else in your life. It's one thing to trust God to give you something or to do something. It's another thing entirely to trust God through something are to continue trusting God when He's not giving you what you want, when everything around you is shaking and you just do not understand what is going on. I would imagine that we have people here tonight, and lots of them, that you feel like literally everything in your life is shaking right now. Got anybody? All right. Now see, for some of you, it's just a thing here or there, but some of you, I mean, it's like, what is going on? And you just don't understand. But I can tell you from many years of experience, and the only way you really learn how to trust God is through experience, by the way. We all start out wanting to trust God, and the only way we learn how to trust God is by having a reason to have to trust God. <laughs> and then as we do trust Him, we see His faithfulness, and then little by little, as we journey with God, and our walk with Him is a journey, as we journey with God, we gain experience. Now, the way you trust God now, if you've been born again for five years, is nothing compared to the way you'll trust God another five years go by, or another 10 years go by, or another 20 years go by. And we will never 100% completely trust until Jesus comes back to get us. But thankfully, we can continue to grow. Trusting God is a decision. And I want to encourage those of you tonight that feel like everything in your life is shaking, that your only real answer is to trust God and to keep on trusting God, and to keep on trusting God. And yes, it's difficult when you don't understand what's going on, and it's especially difficult when what's going on in your life just does not seem fair. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26, which is where we're gonna begin, talks about how God shakes things in our life until only those things that cannot be shaken remain. So that means God's going to work with us until we let go of all the unstable things in our life and we're only hanging on to the rock of our salvation that cannot be moved. And so I had these, this group of women, they helped me in my women's ministry, there was about 12 of them, and I just, thought they were my best friends ever. They would never hurt me. They'll always be for me. Well, that's the first mistake. There is nobody on this earth that's breathing that will never hurt you. <laughs> I don't care how much they love you, as human beings, we do not have the ability to never, ever, ever hurt somebody or disappoint somebody that we're in relationship with. So you're setting yourself up for a lot of pain if you're looking at anybody thinking, you'll never hurt me. I can always, always depend on you. Don't give that trust to anybody but Jesus. He is the only one that deserves that kind of total, complete, radical trust. And don't ever look at anybody and think, I don't know what I'd do without you. I don't know what I'd do without you. The only one you wanna say that to is Jesus. I don't know what I would do without you. And so, long story short, I had a relationship with these ladies for a long time, and we were just having fun, just 
having fun, being in, I think, really playing at being in ministry at that point. And um, I still couldn't even really tell you what happened. I know now that it was God just revealing their weaknesses. Not that I didn't have a bunch of my own, I did, but God was going to promote me to new levels in ministry. He had a plan for my life, and I couldn't take those people with me. Do you know, every place where the bus stops, somebody has to get off. Amen. <laughs> and so the bus was stopped and God was ready to take me to my next destination, but there were some people that needed to get off the bus and I didn't know it. So long story short, I found out they were talking about me behind my back. I found out that one of them was after my job. I found out that they were telling lies about me. And look at me when I tell you that I was devastated and heartbroken. I couldn't believe it because they were Christians. <laughs> now, I had come from worldly relationships where people did that kind of stuff, but these were Christians. So don't even look at your Christian friends and think, you will never hurt me. And it's not even that people are mean. They're just people. They're just fleshly people. And so that's a time when I can remember when man was my world shaken. I mean shaken. I did not understand what was going on. The pain in my soul was so deep. But part of the thing that you have to realize is that what you don't understand now things that you're going through right now that you do not understand, you cannot make any sense out of it all, later on, I promise you, later on, you will look back and say, now I get it. Now I get it. Amen? And please believe me when I say that a lot of the things that you think are terrible actually in reality are good. And the things that aren't good, God can work for good. But now listen, we're partners with God. He doesn't just work everything out for good. We trust him and he works everything out for good. We trust God and he works everything out for good. So for those of you tonight, either here in the building or watching from home, and you feel like everything in your world is shaking, I understand what you're going through, but I can tell you that many of those things that are shaking are things that you don't really need in your life anyway. They're not stable things, and God's going to give you something that is stable, which is more of Him. Do you know the less of other stuff you have, the more of God there's room for in your life? I remember one time moaning, oh God, I just don't have anybody but you. <laughs> Poor Joyce, just stuck with God. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> All right, verse 26. Then at Mount Sinai, his voice shook the earth, but now he has given a promise Yet once more I will shake and make tremble not only the earth, but also the starry heavens. Now this expression yet once more indicates the final removal and transformation of all that can be shaken. That is, what has been created in order that that which cannot be shaken may remain and continue. I wonder how many people would have the courage to pray sincerely, God, I invite you to shake everything in my life that can be shaken. I didn't see too many hands up. But. So that only those things that cannot be shaken remain. How many of you want a better life? You know what? You got to go through to get there. Let us therefore receive a kingdom that is firm and stable and cannot be shaken, 
And let us offer to God pleasing service and acceptable worship with modesty and pious care and godly fear and awe, for our God is indeed a consuming fire. You know, the Bible talks a lot about fire. Fire is a purifying agent, and I believe the baptism of fire, which the Bible talks about, John said, I baptize you in water, but one will come after me who will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. We don't hear enough about the baptism of fire, but I've had that in my life, and many of you have had that in your life. And it wasn't pleasant, but I'll tell you what it amounts to. God comes in, and he burns up everything in your life that is useless. And what's worth keeping, he sets on fire for his glory. I'm gonna say that one more time because you're looking at me kind of bug-eyed. Why do we want to hang on to useless stuff? I don't know, do you have any bad attitudes that could be burned out of you? No, not you, I'm sure. When the fire of God comes in our life, we sing songs like, oh God, send your fire. <laughs> when the fire of God comes into our life, it's gonna be painful before it's pleasant. Amen? You know, we're so afraid of pain, but a lot of times pain makes things better. It does. Sometimes you can have eternal pain that's getting you nowhere, but if you have the right kind of pain or if you embrace the right kind of pain for a short period of time, it will bring you into a much better place. I can use the example of the knee replacements. I mean, the, gosh, I hope I don't have to have a knee replaced. The, <laughs> the hip replacement surgery that I had, I put up with back pain for 20 plus years. Pain, 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 pain. How many of you have had pain long enough in your life? And I'm not just talking physical pain, I'm talking emotional pain or any other kind of pain. Is anybody tired of being upset all the time? Tired of being mad at people because you, you choose bad friends that you won't let go of and then you don't understand. <laughs> Why not just pray, God, get every person out of my life that is not good for me and even if I'm lonely for a long time, give me people in my life that are right, godly people that I can count on and trust. Well, I'll tell you what, if I can get you to pray some specific ways, we can get some of God's business done in this place tonight. Not just, oh God, bless me. <laughs> bless me, Lord. Now, how about send your fire? Shake everything in my life that can be, can be shaken. And it, it may not be pleasant for a while, but honey, later on, later on, later on is such an anointed time in our lives. You see, now I'm living in later on. But it wasn't easy to get here. It was worth it. I finally got fed up with going around and around the same stupid mountains over and over and over. Oh God, I don't understand what's wrong. Oh God. I hope somebody in the building is at that place tonight and my message can do you some kind of good. Could we at least pray, God, you do what you want to do in my life. I have a little prayer that I pray, God, if you have to tie me to the altar, that's why, if you have to tie me to the altar and don't let me get away, but do what you want to do in my life. Now, our God is indeed a consuming fire. You know, sometimes people have everything in, your li in their life shaken in reality. In Nepal, not very long ago, there was a sudden and a terrible earthquake. How I many of you heard about that? Okay. You know, we hear about things like that and sadly we forget them about as quick as we hear about them. And we're sorry for the people and their lives are left in devastation. 
But these are times when the body of Christ needs to rise up and at least pray, God, is there something I can do? So I can't even, just imagine if that was you, if you were having a cup of tea and all of a sudden, a few minutes later, your house is in shambles around you. You can't find some of your children. Perhaps your parents have been killed or many other terrible, terrible things. And you know, when people are in situations like that, they tend to think that life is over. But I want to tell you something, no matter what condition your life is in right now, no matter how many pieces it's in, with God's help, you can rebuild. You can rebuild. And the people in Nepal can rebuild. And this will be on television there, and I'm purposely trying to use a little bit of this to encourage them that they can rebuild. Their lives can be rebuilt. And no matter how far you think you are away from God, He knows where you're at. And God will go to any lengths to get to you and to help you. God will find somebody that He can love you through, and He will love you back into wholeness, and He will meet your needs if you trust Him. <laughs> Isaiah 40, 29 through 31 are wonderful scriptures that we should take a look at right now. You know them. He gives power to the faint and the weary. And to him who has no might, he increases strength, causing it to multiply and making it abound. Even young people shall faint and be weary, and selected young men shall feebly stumble and fall exhausted. But they that wait upon the Lord, See, I knew you'd like that, but they that wait upon the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in Him shall change and renew their strength. Through the strength of God, you can rise up and rebuild. You can run and not be weary. You can walk and you shall not faint. When I asked how many of you felt like everything in your life was shaking, I spotted a few people, not everybody, but I could tell from looking at you that there's some really major things going on in your life right now. Well, you know what? Congratulations to you for being in the house of God to get the help that you need. And they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. You can rebuild. Everybody say, I can rebuild. Except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. Maybe your house fell down because you were trying to build it before. How about this go around, let's let God build the house. Let's let Him be the one that builds it. Well, what do you do when things are happening in your life and you just don't understand? Psalm 37, three, trust in the Lord and do good. <laughs> trust, lean on, rely on, and be confident in the Lord and do good. Very simple. It's a two-step plan to success when everything in your life is falling apart. Trust God and do good. Now, I did this in detail this morning, but let me quickly say that whatever ails us, God's Word is medicine for our soul. And you know, like for example, if, if I sin and I'm miserable with guilt because I've sinned, I can take a good dose of God forgives me. <laughs> I can take a good dose of the mercy of God and be healed in my soul. If I'm mad at somebody else because they've hurt me, I can take a good dose of I forgive you <laughs> and be completely healed. If I'm sick with jealousy, because somebody else is getting what I want, I can take a great big dose of contentment and my soul can be healed. But there's one thing that is the answer to every problem that ails us, and it's called trust God and do good. If you have a nice big bottle of both of these things in your house, I don't care what ails you, you've got what you need to always be well. Now look, this is a prescription for trust comes from Dr. Jesus. 
The patient is prescribed for as whosoever. Take as many as you need for as long as you need. Refills are endless. But you have to be careful, this stuff has side effects. I mean, when you start taking trust, wow. You have a side effect of peace, joy, stability, confidence. <laughs> better life. And then if you max, match it up with some do good. See, I think a lot of times we think, well, I'm trusting God, but what are you doing? While you're trusting God, are you sowing some good seeds in somebody else's life? And believing that even though you can't fix your own problem, you can help somebody else. And through doing that, you're sowing a seed that will then bring a harvest in your life. And even something as devastating as the earthquake in Nepal, I would go there and preach the same message that I'm preaching to you because I don't care how bad off you are, you can always find something that you can do for somebody else and nothing makes the devil any madder than when he's throwing his best, biggest problem at you for you to say, I'm gonna trust God and I'm gonna help somebody else. Now this do-good stuff has side effects too, and they're extreme happiness. <laughs> and rewards in heaven. See? Trust God, they're right in here, the pills. <laughs> and we got do-good pills in here too. You know, when we don't understand, and we start trying to figure out what only God knows, there can only be one result, and that's confusion. If I would have started out tonight and said, how many of you are confused right now about something going on in your life? I would have had a lot of hands go up. But see, here's the truth. You can't be confused if you refuse to try to figure it out. I can tell you right now, Dave is a guy that does not try to figure anything out. He's just like, God knows, and he'll take care of it. I'm casting my care. And I've gotten there. It's taken me 40 years, but I've, I have a breakdown every once in a while, but I'm, I'm doing good. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the Bible says that we know in part. We know in part. We don't know everything. We're not intended to know everything. It wouldn't even be good for us if we knew everything. Do you know, if you knew right now everything coming up in your future, hmm, <laughs> most of us would just sign off and say, forget it. <laughs> or even if you knew how God intends to use you or bless you in the future, you might get full of pride and that would ruin it. So God only reveals things to us a little bit of time as he knows it's right. And there is no such thing, there's no need for trust if we know everything. Do you know that God really couldn't even be your God if you knew everything that he knows? We need to get satisfied to know the one who knows and not have to know everything. Can some of you take a step of faith tonight and say, I don't understand what's going on in my life, but I am not gonna try to figure it out anymore. I am gonna trust God and I am gonna do good. Father, I pray that you would help us trust you even when life is hard, even when it hurts, even when it seems unfair. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. God, please help us trust you. Help us not to quit and give up and to back away from hard things. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. 
thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I pray, Lord, that you're giving people understanding, that they're gaining the strength to keep on keeping on and not to ever quit and give up. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name. Have you been looking for a 365-day devotional? Well, look no further than the promises for your everyday life devotional from Joyce Meyer. There's a focus verse for all 365 days of the year, along with a prayer starter. Get your copy of Promises for Your Everyday Life devotional at joycemeyer.org slash 365devo. We have an exciting YouTube offer that's specially designed to help you spend quality time with your kids and nurture their growth with God, the incredible power of God's Word, and Best Day Ever, two remarkable books crafted to inspire kids as they embark on a faith-filled exploration and discover the wonders of God's love. Unleash the power of faith and create unforgettable moments with your kids. Go to joycemeyer.org slash kidsdevo and grab this limited time offer today. The biggest thing that we need to do is learn how to think like God thinks. And the only way you can do that is by knowing the Word of God. In Words to Live By, Joyce Meyer shares how studying the Word of God transformed her life. Experience a deeper and more meaningful relationship with God through the captivating collection of verses in this beautiful hardcover book by Joyce Meyer. Discover the transformative power of His Word. Words to Live By from Joyce Meyer. Get your YouTube exclusive offer today. Go to joycemeyer.org slash words and the number two. Have you ever been trapped in a never-ending frenzy where every passing moment feels like a blur, leaving you gasping for a chance to pause and catch your breath? In her insightful book, Pursuing Peace, Joyce Meyer explores the importance of seeking peace at all costs. This beautiful hardcover edition is filled with meaningful scriptures and uplifting quotes from Joyce, providing valuable guidance for living a peaceful lifestyle. So grab a cup of coffee, find a comfortable spot, and embark on your journey to find peace. Remember, this limited-time YouTube offer won't last long. Go to joycemeyer.org pursuit to get your copy today and start your pursuit of peace. The mind actually is the battlefield. That's where we win or lose the war with Satan. He said all he gets to say. (laughs) He says yes, the rest of the day is mine. You start asking God to heal you and he will restore. He's the God of all comfort. And I am so grateful that I know how to call on God. 